The airline that we took was EasyJet and it was only actually 36 pounds. It's very, very cost efficient to fly within Europe. And then we decided to take a train to our hotel, which is only located at Zurich HB headquarters. So it was only about three stops away from the airport. So it's really fast and efficient. Hey everyone, so we are in Switzerland now and we're in the train and we are heading to the main station where our hotel is. When we got to Zurich, it was rainy and cloudy, but we walked to our hotel and that was only about five minutes from the Zurich HB train station and we are staying at Hotel Montana. I very much highly recommend this hotel. I booked it on booking.com and it wasn't that expensive, but it was a very professional and clean hotel. The staff were really great and very, very friendly and it's just a beautiful lobby. It's a three-star hotel, but it was very clean and professional and very nice. I felt that was very homey as well, so when Jacob opens the door, you can see our bed. It was kind of like in a little attic, and it's a very nice little traditional house kind of thing. And that's my bed, the little one, and I have my own kind of private window, but it's a very nice place to return to. I highly recommend this hotel, and you should look it up on TripAdvisor. It's very nice, safe, clean. After checking in, we took the tram to the main Old Town City, which is basically Old Town Zurich or Altsec. Is next to the Limat River. Hey everyone, so we are in Zurich and the town is called Old Town and this is Limat Kwai, the street. And we have to, we're walking to the Swiss restaurant now. Um, it's raining and really dreary, but hopefully it will clear up soon. It looks really nice, the buildings, but you can't really do much exploring with this weather. If there's one thing that you have to eat in Zurich or Switzerland in general, it's fondue. So I decided to go to Adler Swiss Chuchi, which is next to the Adler's Hotel. And my friend recommended this, so I thought I would go. And it's a really nice restaurant, very neat and nice and cute and very Swiss. So it's very traditional looking. And this is our fondue. Hey everyone, so we are at Swiss Chuchi restaurant. And over here we have our fondue. And it's traditionally a very Swiss thing to have on you. Fondue is so fun and great for sharing. So you can just take a piece of bread, swirl it into the cheese, and the cheese has a bit of brandy on it. It's not totally total cheese, but more of a sauce. A great thing about Zurich is how beautiful the old town is. You're talking about medieval to traditional buildings, and of course, cobbled streets. It's very quaint. There are a lot of shops, there are a lot of cafes. Just do not come on Labor Day or any public holiday because most of them are closed. Now this is Grossmünster, and this is probably the icon of Zurich. It's like a, it's a church and with two towers, two large towers, and it's a medieval church dating back from the 1200s, I believe. And it's most famous for its stained glass windows. You can also climb the tower, it'll take you 187 steps up, and you can see a total view of Zurich. This is Frau Munster, which is another iconic church, and this is most known for the Marc Chagall, which was a Cubist, very famous Cubist artist who created the stained glass windows in the 40s. And then if you want to eat something, um, I would suggest going to Sprungli. So after that, we after the sightseeing, we decided to go to Sprungli, and we had this delicious hazelnut chocolate cake. It was yummy, and also this strawberry tart. I recommend both of these. They were just amazingly delicious. And we also had some hot chocolate. Sprungli is as famous as Lindt in Zurich, or actually in Switzerland probably. And after that, we decided to go to Lake Zurich. Now, as you can see, it was very rainy and groggy, but you know, didn't stop us from taking the ferry. And the ferry is around, uh, I think about 13, 
francs to go on it for a short round trip. It will be about an hour to an hour and a half. After that, we decide to go to Zilg House Keller, which is also another famous restaurant in Zurich. Zilg House Keller was actually a medieval arms holder, so basically it holds all the cannons, all the swords, and that kind of thing since very, very long ago, Middle Ages, you're talking about. Here you can have like sausage and also potato salad and creamy pasta, that kind of thing. It's really not my kind of food, but you know, you gotta eat it in Switzerland. Time for day two, and we decided to visit Lucerne for lunch, and then after go to Mount Titlis to see the beautiful snowy mountains. And I feel like if you come to Switzerland, the best part of Switzerland is actually the countryside. You're just seeing the mountains and the fields. It's not really about the city life, but this is Lucerne, and here in Lucerne, we have lunch. So it's just a little pit stop. It's a beautiful city or town to come to. Hey everyone, so we are in Lucerne. And you can see the famous Lucerne symbol. And we just had lunch. We kind of made our own sandwiches. Jacob is partially finished with his. We got some chocolate. And it's actually lint chocolate, but I don't know if I'm being fooled, but it says the original, perhaps original formula. Um, and it's 49%. Linton Squiggly, and we actually saw the factory when we were on the lake cruise the other day. So let's try it. My snack. That's like very snappy and rich. The star of my entire trip to Switzerland was actually this place called Mount Titlitz. At Mount Titlitz, you can go to the top via a lot of cable cars and you can see the beautiful snow-capped mountains. I have never seen snow-capped mountains in my life, like in real life. So seeing these were like just amazing and it's so, so, so beautiful. The mountains, the lakes, the little houses, the alpine trees. And this is us going into, I think, the second or third cable car. You have to ride like three cable cars to go to the top. It's quite a long distance. But once you get to the top, it's around, I think, 10,000 feet up. And you can see the beautiful snow-capped mountains. Just look at this. This view just makes you just want to sing a song. It's beautiful. Uh, hey guys, so I'm on Mount Titlis now. And it's there are great mountains in the back and I'm surrounded by lots of snow. It's so unbelievable. Like oh, I've never been in so much snow in my entire life. So I can not believe I'm here. It is indescribable and amazing. And God is amazing. There's a place like this and it's like All we know is what we know and we have no idea that there are places like this because there are actually places like this and it is beyond anything I could have just ever imagined. It's so beautiful. I can't, I don't even know what to say to be honest. So yeah, I'm just really glad I'm up here and I kind of want to make a snow angel now. Snow. Here, I can just get some snow for you. Snow. So I don't have any gloves. And it's sparkling! Woo! You're basically surrounded by 360 degrees view of the mountains and the Swiss Alps. It is just beautiful and very, very cold. It's around zero degrees, but it can get to the negatives as well. So make sure that you have your coat ready and your gloves. But on the mountain, you can also do a cliff walk which is that cliff walk you just saw and also a bunch of other activities. You can just take lots of pictures and it's highly recommended to bring your camera obviously because the views are just something you just want to remember for the rest of your life. I will definitely remember this moment for the rest of my life. It is just breathtaking and I'm just so happy I'm doing this YouTube video because at least I can just keep this as a memory. <laughs> But yeah, just beyond words, beyond words. And I highly recommend it going to Mount Titlis. There are a bunch of other mountains that you can visit, but this one is apparently snowy all year round. Even if you come during the summer, it's snowy. So I think 
to see these mountains in Switzerland is definitely a must do on your list. You have to come and see the snowy mountains. It is just so beautiful in Switzerland. It's day three and look at the breakfast spread that I've been having at Hotel Montana. It is just amazing. Lots of cheese, lots of cut fruit, honey, bread. I was just surprised because I expected to just have like a donut or something, but they had a huge spread of food and I was very, very happy with it. So I decided to put it in the video. 72. <laughs> Japanese food. <laughs> you better if someone has told you that Switzerland is expensive, they're telling the truth because it is very expensive here. Food can be around $30 and up per dish. This was $72. It's ridiculous. So remember to basically make your own sandwiches. After breakfast, we went on our second tour and this is a Hans Mayer Grey Line Interlaken and Grindelwald tour. So basically first we went to Interlaken. Interlaken is actually this small town in beautiful the Bernese Oberland mountain ranges. It is beautiful except that there is not much to do here to be honest except to wallow in the grass and look at the mountains. Hey everyone so right now I'm in Interlaken and it's just for like a lunch period around to like 12 and it's just a really beautiful little town. Um, as you can see there are mountains behind me and there are beautiful tulips. The tulips are here and also beautiful mountains so we're just surrounded by the mountains. It's gorgeous and definitely worth just coming here for a little bit. That I said little bit because again there's not much to do here but it is very very beautiful. You can run around. You can also go para, I think this is paragliding. I would love to go paragliding but I was with my dad and he probably wouldn't let me. But yeah you can just run around the fields really nice but the town itself is very small so there's really not much to do here in the town um, but we decided to have some food and we went to this little shop and had some empanadas actually, it was a bit random but we ate empanadas for lunch and there's lots of nice cows, I love the cows in Switzerland, they're so cute, they have like little bells and after Interlaken we went to Grindelwald which is another mountain village now our tour actually left us here for the next four hours and didn't tell us that there was nothing to do here except to look at the mountains which for some people is a very good thing but for us we loved it for a while. I mean, this is me rolling in the grass and everything. I mean, yay, and it's beautiful, yes, but there's nothing else to do for the next four hours. Now we're trying to find some lunch. McDonald's! How do you feel about Grindelwald? Well, it's a good place to die, I suppose. <laughs> it's so quite so horrible. Peaceful. This is my French onion soup. We have fries and Jacob has ordered spaghetti. Spaghetti. And spaghetti. Spaghetti. And we are in beautiful Grindelwald. Okay everyone, right now we are just hiking. We're actually hiking because we have nothing else to do. So I believe these beautiful houses are private property. <laughs> so hopefully we don't this anyone else off. And it looks like we have reached a dead end. <laughs> but it is beautiful. So sorry we are closed. Everything is closed. <laughs> Cable car is not operating. Nothing's operating. And we're here for four hours. It's like an airport transit. So, so right now it is April 29th and it's just smack in this period where all the shops in Grindelwald are pretty much closed. So if you're coming during this time, do not go to Grindelwald. Actually Grindelwald would probably be best for people going skiing or in a ski resort, but if you're doing none of that, it's a very much stop for an hour kind of place. The scenery was beautiful no doubt, but I do not recommend this tour. Just go and go to the snowy mountains, it's beautiful. And you'll see all these sites on the way to the snowy mountains anyway. Just wanted a shout out to Don't Worry Eat Curry and we ate this every single night when we were in Zurich. This is only 14 francs for the entire set and I just wasn't used to the Swiss food of the bread and cheese and potatoes. I just needed some rice. On our last day we stayed in Zurich. It was rainy and again very cloudy so we just went to the museum. We went up the tower. This is the view from the tower of the Grossmünster Church. So yeah, nice. 
So we have all these fountains around Zurich. And I think they're drinkable. Oh my gosh, he's drinking it. Don't die. I don't know, it seems drinkable with this. This is just, I feel like that one. Yes, we have this really cool app that translates this German into English. So that says, come on Tom, Swatch eagle go down. The eagle, as symbol of the German Reich, gave the home since 1314 his name. Overall, Switzerland was an amazing trip. To see the snowy mountains is something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. However, I feel that if you come to Switzerland, the best thing to do is actually just stay in those small little towns in the countryside. That way you can see what Switzerland is really made of. I really think that you know, the towns like Zurich and everything like that is nice if you like the city life, but for me, I've come to Switzerland to see those countryside things. So I think if I were to come back again, I would stay like in a farm, milk some cows with bells, see traditional people in traditional dress. I really like that kind of thing. So overall, it is a very expensive city though, so be prepared to pay your way. But I think that it is definitely worth it if you have never seen the alpine mountain life. So yeah, really great trip and I really hope you like this video. Bye!